No. Ah, you can't do it. If you make this mistake as a new Harley owner, you need to take your motorcycle straight back to the dealership. Mistakes new Harley owners make, they're easy to do, they're common. Don't let that be you. Here are some tips to help you. Hi, welcome to the channel. My name's Aim, and today we're gonna to discuss mistakes that new Harley owners make. They're easy to make, I've made them myself. Let's get into it. There's a fantastic bonus tip at the end. Probably the most important tip that anyone is gonna give you in the whole wide world. If you make this mistake as a new Harley owner, you need to take your motorcycle straight back to the dealership and ride something else. So stay around till the end and I'll tell you what it is. So let me know in the comments, have you made a Harley Davidson buying mistake? What have you, don't say, yeah, I bought a Harley. Uh, what was it and how did you get around it? All right, so let's get into it. I've made most of the mistakes I'm gonna talk about myself and um, I'll try and give you some tips on how to get around them. Now, mistake number one, and these aren't in order, mistake number one is not allowing for modifications to your Harley when you buy it. So you might think that you're gonna leave it standard, but the beauty of Harley Davidsons are that you can modify them and tailor them to your unique taste. So that might be engine modifications for performance, or it might just be for aesthetics. Doesn't really matter, but it's most likely that you're gonna make changes, so you need to budget for that. Most people are gonna want their Harley to have an individual flair or individual characteristics. That's the beauty of buying a Harley Davidson. We don't want them to be the same as everybody else's, and I know I've got a black street glide, so it's hard to say that but um, I like the look of it. Now it's pretty definite that this is gonna happen and a lot of people coming into the world of Harley don't really understand that that's what they're gonna to want to do. You see, you can make them look a lot nicer than when they come from the factory. I guess the um, manufacturer makes them a little bit generic so that it caters to the widest audience possible. And um, you know we're all individuals, we like to change our bikes. It's a fantastic thing to do and that's part of the attraction of riding a Harley. Now I always try and buy the bike that is closest to the end picture that I have in mind. So if you're buying a new Harley or even a second hand one, think about how you're gonna want it to look in the end and then go through all the parts that you might have to buy because it's a lot easier buying something that's a quarter or a halfway there. We've all got budgets, so it's a lot easier studying each bike before you buy it and having a good analysis of what you want to change so that you're not blowing out your budget. My current Street Glide is the seventh Harley that I've owned and it's also the Harley that I've done the least modifications to just because I like the look of it as it is uh, with some minor um, aesthetic changes. But <laughs> I've still done performance uh, modifications to make it what I consider um, acceptable. Now that's very subjective and you might not want any more performance or you might want twice as much as what I've got here, but you will end up doing something, I guarantee it. So make sure you budget for it. Other common mods are the handlebars, the seat. You want your bike to be um, to fit you perfectly. So if you watch my video, the nine essential modifications to your Harley motorcycle, it goes through in a lot more detail about what I consider are the essential mods. Actually, this is it's, it's very interesting. Let me know if you've got a stock standard Harley because I don't think I've ever in my life met anyone that has a standard Harley Davidson. At the very least, They've changed the pipes in some way to make their Harley sound better. All right, now, number two, and that is clothing and accessories. If you're coming into the world of Harley Davidson, once again, you need to budget for a change of clothing and accessories. If you've come off a super bike and you've got your Power Ranger outfit, you're gonna look very silly on your very tough, mean-looking black Harley in a fluoro suit. We've all got different backgrounds when we come to Harleys. If you're brand new to motorcycles, you're probably gonna need to spend some money on clothing and accessories. So for example, here in Melbourne, it's in, in one day you can get very hot and very cold, 
depending on how long you're out for, it might rain. So I find that um, riding any type of motorcycle, really, I need a lot of different clothes um, to cater for all of the weather types. You're outside all day. The wind chill factor as you're um, moving increases as you increase your speed. So if you're you know, even at the speed limit down the freeway, it can be bloody cold. So you know you might think about um, leather jackets. You know thin leather jackets, thicker leather, leather jackets, textile jackets, waterproof clothing. Um, if you're coming from a different type of bike, you might want to, um, as I do, use an open face helmet. I find on the street glide it's almost impossible to ride with a full face helmet. Uh, the wind buffeting just knocks you around too much. I, I think the shape of full face helmets are designed for um, leaning over on your bike, not sitting upright. So if I do want that extra protection, I use like a motocross style. I think it's a, uh, a Shoei X0 or something like that. I'll, I'll put it in one of the videos, um, which is adequate, um, probably a bit noisy. And um, of course, an open face helmet. So, you, you know, there is always something new to buy. Now, with an open face helmet, you're going to need um, sunglasses or goggles. You need to make sure that they are uh, shatterproof. You don't want a rock hitting you. And then the, uh, you know, the old cheapo glasses that you bought shatter and do some damage to your eye. There's, you know, balaclavas and neck warmers and there is always something. So, you know, bearing in mind you are very exposed on a Harley. Often they don't have um, fairings. You're sitting upright. And um, if, especially if you want to ride all seasons. So, so make sure you budget for extra clothing and accessories. So you've moved to a Harley Davidson. You're probably going to succumb to peer group pressure, <laughs> especially if you're riding with a lot of other people, and buy black motorcycle gear. So depending on what you've had before, whether that's nothing or whether that's different coloured clothing, you might end up needing to buy, you know, black leather gear. Easy to say, nah, 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 I'm just gonna wear whatever I like. But um, most people succumb to peer group pressure and most people want to fit in and look like others. And of course, it brings up an interesting point with um, an allowance for clothing and accessories because you're probably gonna buy the wrong thing sometimes as well so let me know in the comments what you've wasted money on and look you end up buying a lot of gear and you know often swapping and changing so for example i've got these harley davidson winter gloves they are sensational they're waterproof and they're warm they've lasted for years and years and years but i can't wear them or i can very rarely maybe twice a year wear them on the street glide because they're just too warm and with my hands behind the fairing, I just don't need it. I often just wear summer gloves with holes in them. So, you know, you, you're going to chop and change. Make sure you've got an allowance for, you know, the gear you're going to buy because it is incredibly, it's a lot easier riding when you've got the right gear and when you're comfortable. Mistake number three, this is very common and that is you've got your Harley, you want to do a performance modification and you choose a cam and a, putting a cam in a Harley seems to be probably the most popular um, and probably one of the easiest cost effective bang for your buck modifications. Now, the mistake that people make is the difference, not understanding the difference between a power cam and a torque cam. A torque cam will give you pulling power low in the rev range. And remember, Harleys are low revving bikes. A power cam will give you a lot more power and top speed in the higher range. So you'll find, well, you might not find this, but a lot of people find that they're riding their Harley at very low revs and they're cruising. And it's a lot nicer to have the pulling power down low, like taking off at the lights or moving from 60 to 100 kilometers an hour instead of increasing your top speed and having to keep the revs up very high, like you would on, well, not like you would on a speed bike. The rev range is going to be incredible, a lot lower than on a sports bike, but it's a lot easier having the power low on a Harley. But a lot of people make the mistake of going for power in their cam and then 
figuring out that, you know, extra power that they've got doesn't kick in till, you know, three and a half thousand RPM when they could have purchased another cam and got that power, you know, at 2,500. So I personally have got a, an SNS 475 cam. It's good. I picked it for its sound. I had to do other modifications to get a better bottom end. It's a common mistake. Don't let that be you. Do your research. There's stacks of information on the internet about which cams kick in earlier. You will appreciate it if you get a kick in low end torque rather than top end power. In practical terms, it means um, you get a much easier and more relaxed ride. You've got all the grunt low down. If you're coming from a sports bike or a super bike, you might not really understand that because you're used to riding in the rev range, you, you'll find that it's quite tiring and an aggressive ride on a superbike compared to a Harley. All of that um, low end torque uh, makes for a much easier, smoother, relaxed, cruisy ride. All right, mistake number four, and that is buying the wrong type of bike. Now, if you're coming from outside of the Harley Davidson world, you might not understand that there are different types of bikes. You can buy a bike that is primarily designed to be a bar hopper, or you can buy a bike that is designed to do long distances on the freeway. And that's probably the a common mistake. I've made it many times actually, because I often think, wow, I want a bike that looks like that. That looks really cool. I'm going to buy a fat boy. I'm going to do this to it. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you end up with a fantastic bike. But when I analyse my riding style, it's basically jumping on the bike, going to the freeway, riding for an hour to get somewhere, and then a couple of streets to the destination, or going straight out on, onto a country road and riding for however many hours. So it finally clicked the, the, <laughs> I got to look out for a touring bike. And the street glides, you know, look, many years ago, I wouldn't have been caught dead on a bike with a fairing. I don't know why. I like the look of fat boys, actually. But um, I found that um, it's so much easier on a street glide. Um, I can sit on much higher speeds for much longer periods of time. And there's also the question of what is your physical frame size compared to the bike? Some of the Harleys are tiny, like, for example, the Sportster. I was going to buy a night ride once, and I just... <laughs> I just couldn't squeeze into it. It was um, just too small. And some of the bikes might be too big for you. So really think it through. Think about the type of riding you're going to do and think about going to a dealer or going around to check out different types of bikes and at the very least sitting on them and seeing if they're suitable for your particular size. Often new riders can't handle the weight of a touring bike. Um, it's too intimidating. So get something smaller, you know, just, just think it through because it's a big purchase and you don't want to do the wrong thing. I mean, you're going to, you're going to love your bike anyway, but it's much easier if you start on the right foot. Now, mistake number five is a classic. I've made this one a few times and that is the exhaust is too loud. Now, even though I've said before in videos, loud pipes save lives, sometimes your exhaust is just way too loud. I used to have this beautiful fat boy, and this is probably the loudest bike I've had, I think. It had straight through shotgun exhausts and um, it had a worked engine, and it was just loud. Like, I, I would ride to um, work in the mornings, and I'd go down this side street, all the shops were you know, closed, and all the alarms would go off. I'd go past cars, the car alarms would go off, and. I just found that, you know, an hour of riding and, oh my God, my head's just, <laughs> it was hard work. So maybe I'm just getting older. You know, I found that the best compromise is an exhaust that sounds good, is loud, but not that loud that you're going to get a headache riding for a long time. There's also other considerations, like, for example, what time do you ride your bike to work in the morning? What time do you get up? And do you love your neighbours? Because, I don't know, you know, how close are you to your neighbours? And are they going to be annoyed and start throwing eggs at you if you wake them up at five o'clock every morning with a loud exhaust? Or are they going to wake up and think, oh, there's a nice sounding Harley? So 
Yeah, there are a lot of um, lifestyle considerations to think about when you're um, doing your exhaust. There's also, you know, a lot of people are trying to save money. They want their exhaust to sound better. So I think the first Harley I ever had, before I even wanted to spend any money on the exhaust, the first thing I did was I got this a steel rod, sharpened the end of it, put it down through the um, put it down into the mufflers with a sledgehammer and bashed out the uh, baffles. <laughs> it did make it sound better, but geez, that's a horrible sound compared to actually getting you know, mufflers that sound better. All right, mistake number six, and that is comparing your new Harley to a different type of bike, like a sports bike. They are completely different bikes and there is no comparison. So you often hear a sports bike rider say, yeah, but you know, Harleys are slow or Harleys, you can't lean. They are a completely different bike, it's a cruiser. So the first Harley I ever got was a fat boy. I came off a super bike, <laughs> straight to a fat boy. And, you know, three weeks of just scraping the floorboards everywhere I went because I was used to leaning a lot further and riding a lot faster. You will get used to it. They're not designed to be sports bikes. So it's just a, it's a silly thing to say, oh, Harleys are slow. Well, they're cruisers. You, you are not going to be doing 300 kilometres an hour around a track or, or down the, you know, down the local side street, it's a Harley. If you want a Harley, get into relaxed mode and understand that it is a very different bike. It's low revving with high torque. It will give you a much more pleasant ride, in my opinion anyway, not an aggressive ride. And they're not designed to do the same as what a sports bike does. Now, having said that, if you take your very slow and cumbersome and non-leaning Harley around some tight twisties, which I often do, it's a lot of fun because it's a lot more difficult <laughs> and there are a lot more limitations, but it's still fun going around corners. tip is not looking cool enough when you get your Harley. Now, this is an important issue, bear with me. About five years ago, I was riding my previous Street Glide, denim black, chrome, beautiful bike. I was going to an event, I parked my bike next to other riders, and I was wearing my sort of a vintage cafe racer Dionysi leather jacket. And the guy next to me looked at me and he said, mate, you can't wear that jacket on your Harley. <laughs> Being a lovely, nice, polite gentleman, I just said thank you and moved on. Brings up an interesting point. He was basically saying that um, I didn't look the part. You can wear whatever you like, really. There's no rules. So what do you think? Do you think you can wear that jacket on a Harley? And it brings up interesting points about looking the part. Most people want to conform. Most people want to belong. Most people want to... Most people are social and want to belong to the group. And it's sort of accepted practice in Harley-Davidson circles that you have a certain look. Sometimes when people don't have that look, they still look good. Some people can get away with it, but a lot of people look really dorky. And surely that brings the rest of us down. Surely it's your duty to uphold the image of all Harley riders. So you've spent a lot of money on this very nice Harley Davidson. You've spent even more money making it look cool. And then you're gonna wear a stupid colored jacket and a helmet that's not appropriate and whatever else you can think of. Or you're gonna do something stupid on your bike. Like for example, you've got this beautiful, very cool looking breakout and you've decided to put touring bags on it. No, ah, you can't do it. You're not going to be cool enough if you do that to your bike. It's going to look stupid. Now, aesthetics are important to your life. When you surround yourself with things that are aesthetically pleasing, it actually enhances your life and it is food for your soul. So think it through carefully and be cool. Of course, it's subjective, isn't it? Like this is a real difficult one. So the tip might be, yeah, you gotta look cool on your Harley, but it's so subjective. So let's say for example, I've got a very slick seat on this street glide, which I think is cool. 
If I go and get a big, comfy, padded seat, have I stuffed my bike up? Am I now an uncool Harley rider? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Am I cool? Am I uncool? Are you one of those riders who thinks, well, I'll do whatever I like? Maybe having a street glide is uncool. Maybe if I don't, maybe you've got to have a fat boy or a breakout to even be cool. What do you think? Now, of course, some people can get away with anything. So, for example, if you're riding a vintage chopper, you're just cool. You can get away with anything. So do the right thing. You're a member of a large community. Don't bring the rest of us down. Make sure you look cool. Now, if you don't know how to look cool, you can hire me as a cool expert. It's only $758 an hour, and I will help you be cool. But seriously, all jokes aside, aesthetics are food for your soul. If you surround yourself with things that look good, if you take pride in your appearance, you take pride in your motorcycle and make it look aesthetically pleasing, I believe that that is um, good for you and good for the people that are looking at you. I guess what I'm saying is put some effort in. Put some effort in with everything in your life. It's going to enhance and improve your life. So if you like today's video, give me a big thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and the bell button. Support the channel. It is much appreciated. If you didn't like what I had to say today, once again, this is your big chance to play Roman Emperor and give me the sign. Thumbs down. So have a fantastic day. I'll see you on the next video.